A yeast infection is often thought about as a female health problem, but the truth is it can actually affect anyone, including men. A genital yeast infection in men, if not treated, can lead to painful, uncomfortable medical problems and complications down the line, especially if it gets into the bloodstream. You should know that it is easy to treat with over-the-counter medication, and also there are basic steps you can take to prevent this condition from occurring or happening again if it has happened before. I'm the Wizdoc, and in this video, we'll talk about what a genital yeast infection is, we'll talk about what causes it, the symptoms, what increases your risk, also how to diagnose and treat, and when you need to reach out to your healthcare provider for further evaluation. So, if you haven't yet, hit the like button, subscribe to this channel, and also hit the notification bell for future videos. So, let's get right into it. In men, a genital yeast infection can cause soreness, redness, and inflammation or swelling of the head of the penis, also known as the glans penis. It is usually transmitted through sexual contact, vaginal intercourse, but in some other instances, it can actually occur without sexual contact. It is important to understand that if you do not treat this properly, it is very likely that it will happen again. You may be wondering that how does a man get a genital infection with yeast or fungus? Isn't that more of a female problem? Well, yes, men do get infections like this. You need to understand that about 15 to 20 percent of men have colonization of their penis with a fungus called candida. A lot of men have a small amount of candida or small amount of yeast around their genital area, just laying docile. There's a normal balance between the bacterial and fungal content on their skin. And if for some reason something happens, be it a medication they're taking or a medical condition or poor hygiene and moist environment, which changes the balance between the bacterial and fungal content on the skin of the penis. This could lead to an overgrowth of the yeast leading to an inflammation and infection. The most common organism responsible for a genital yeast infection is candida. Now let's look at other factors or risk factors that predispose you to developing a genital yeast infection. Apart from having sex with a partner that has an active yeast infection, which predisposes you to developing a similar infection, there are other risk factors. For example, being uncircumcised. This is a major risk factor to developing a genital yeast infection in men as the area around the foreskin is a breeding ground or can be a breeding ground for the candida. You should also understand that if you have a poor hygiene, you do not bath well or clean your genital area the way you should clean it, that also predisposes you to developing a genital yeast infection. Other risk factors that predispose you to developing a genital yeast infection include taking medications like antibiotics, steroids, Conditions like diabetes mellitus can also predispose you to developing a genital yeast infection. And also, it's important to know that if you have an impaired immune system, for example, in people with HIV or those undergoing chemotherapy for cancer, can also find themselves at high risk of developing a genital yeast infection. So now let's talk about some of the symptoms that you find associated with this condition. You could have a really bad itch or you can have like a red, cracked skin. In some instances, you can have white patches on the penis or a thick, foul smelling, in some cases, whitish discharge on the penis, around the folds, or around the foreskin. You could also have swelling around the genitals. And in some cases, when you pee, it burns. If you know that you have redness, itchiness, burning when you pee, please talk to your doctor because it could be candida, or it could be something else. It could be a more severe illness that needs to be treated as soon as possible. So if you have any of these symptoms, please talk to your doctor as soon as possible. So regarding how we diagnose this condition, this can easily be diagnosed through a medical history and also from a physical exam when you talk to your doctor. In some cases, a doctor will want to run some more tests. You possibly get the penile swab, which means getting a swab from the penis get a small sample, look under the microscope, and run some more tests to confirm the presence of the fungus. We might also run a urine test and a blood test to figure out any other possible co-infections or complications from the current infection. 
And it is important to note that this can actually be done on the same day during that same hospital or clinic visit. So regarding treatment of this infection, you should understand that this can actually be treated first line with over-the-counter antifungal medication like ointments and creams, and in some instances, prescription strength medication prescribed by your healthcare provider. Please only take the medication that has been recommended by your physician and for the duration of time that it has been recommended for. Do not stop taking the medication once you start feeling better. Ensure to complete the full therapy to prevent a high chance of recurrence. Also, there are steps you take at home to help with treatment. As long as you're taking the current medication, it is important to ensure that you maintain adequate hygiene of your genital area. And if you're uncircumcised, to pull the foreskin backwards so that you can actually clean it effectively. Also ensuring that your underwear is clean and also cotton and breathable. For men that are uncircumcised, your doctor might recommend circumcision to help control infections that return and are difficult to treat. Ensure to contact your healthcare provider. If you have a fever, if your symptoms go away and return, if your symptoms do not get any better with the therapy you're undergoing, if for some reason your symptoms get worse or you have new symptoms. And that brings us to the end of this video. In this video, we've talked about a penile or genital yeast infection, what they are, what causes it, the risk factors, how to diagnose it, how to treat it, how to prevent it, and what needs to happen for you to go talk to your doctor, okay? This is not very common as a condition, but it does happen and it is easily treatable and preventable. And if you have any questions or concerns about what you heard today, please drop it down in the comments. If you haven't yet, please hit the like button, subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell for future videos. Thank you for watching this video. I'll catch you later. Stay safe, stay happy. I'm the Wizdoc. Bye.